This car never received the love it deserves. Like, why don't people still talk about the Honda Prelude? It's the often overlooked sports coupe meant to do battle with the Toyota Celica. Arguably one of the least remembered of the pantheon of legendary 1980s and 1990s Japanese sport compacts, the Honda Prelude remains one of the more fascinating cars in Honda's history. It had all the bells and whistles, an SI, four-wheel steering, torque vectoring, VTEC, and who can forget the 80s pop-up headlights? It's like Honda designed the Prelude to be a secret agent. It had all the advanced technology of its time, but it was the car that was always in the shadows, overshadowed by its competition. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but wait, the Prelude hasn't been in production since 2001. What's the big deal? Well, my friends, there are rumors swirling that Honda is bringing back the Prelude in 2028, and we're here to give you the lowdown on this legendary sports coupe. It's been over two decades since the last Honda Prelude discontinued in 2001. The two-door sports coupe was among the most exciting vehicles within the Japanese brand's extensive lineup. But since the revival of old nameplates has become the in thing these past years, hello Toyota Supra and Acura Integra, there's hope for the Prelude's return. It was the flagship model of Honda during its golden age, and it has all the Honda characteristics necessary to achieve the cult-like reputation of an import tuner. So, to get to the point we are at today, we need to go back in time a little to 1978, when things were going pretty well for the Honda company. They'd been exporting cars to the US since the beginning of the decade, and by 1977, both the Civic and Accord were changing American minds about the usefulness of these small Japanese cars. But they had a bit of a gap in their lineup, and the Prelude was the perfect car to fill that gap. Well, Honda saw that the Toyota Celica was doing pretty well with its long hood and short deck style, and figured they could do the same. So, they did what any car company would do. They yanked the engine, suspension, and brakes out of the Accord, and threw it into a new chassis drawn up by chief Honda engineer Hiroshi Kazama. But let's be real, the first generation Prelude wasn't exactly a home run. Performance was average for the era, with 0 to 60 miles per hour taking around 19 seconds. And despite the fact that it had an excellent name and Honda's then burgoining reputation for excellent little cars, the first generation Prelude didn't sell all that well. Owing to a relatively high price tag and a less than stellar driving experience that wasn't quite up to snuff with the sporty compact image Honda was pushing. But Honda knew the Prelude wasn't great, but they weren't just going to give up. They still wanted a sporty coupe, so they went back to the drawing board and started dreaming up something truly groundbreaking. The result was a car that would go on to become one of Honda's most iconic models. So, Honda kept the long hood and short deck lid, but knocked a few inches off the hood height and belt line, giving the impression that the new Prelude was a lot lower than it actually was. But this presented a peculiar problem for the engineers. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever looked at a car, thought to yourself, man, that looks sporty and fun, but I bet it doesn't handle well? Well, that's exactly what the engineers at Honda were thinking when they first designed the Prelude. But they weren't about to let that stop them. Since they lowered the hood, there wasn't enough room for the traditional McPherson strut suspension that was present on the first-gen Prelude. But like the true car geniuses they are, they came up with a solution, double wishbone suspension. This new double wishbone setup used control arms running parallel to each other and kept the wheel perpendicular to the ground even around sharp corners. On top of that, it was much more compact, saving space. The double wishbone suspension was the missing piece in the Prelude puzzle. No more understeer and now it was fun and sporty as it looked. The second generation Prelude released in 1983 was the real deal and began in earnest the saga of sharp handling, cutting edge, high tech coupes associated with the Prelude name. But Honda wasn't satisfied with just that. In 1985, they made the Prelude even better by adding disc brakes in the rear and introducing a sport-oriented model. It had a new fuel injection system and was sporty. This new compact layout necessitated a suspension rework, so a new double wishbone design was implemented for the front, complemented by an independent McPherson strut design in the rear, lending impressive handling and ride characteristics. Power initially came from a 1.8-liter four-cylinder capable of 100 horsepower, but the later 1986-1987 Prelude 2.0 SI added the larger 2-liter four-cylinder, good for 110 horsepower and 114 foot-pounds of torque. 
Compared to the first-gen Prelude, performance improved significantly, with a second-generation car capable of 0 to 60 miles per hour, somewhere in the 9-second range. So, in short, the Prelude went from looking sporty to actually being sporty thanks to the double wishbone suspension. When the third generation Prelude hit the market in 1988, it was like nothing else out there. It was like Honda engineers were playing a game of copy and paste with the double wishbone suspension and decided to put it back in the car, making it even more agile around corners. But that's not even the best part. The Prelude debuted with four-wheel steering, and not just any four-wheel steering, but a fully mechanical system that beat out other Japanese manufacturers emerging for WS systems. But wait. Hold up. Wait a minute. There's more. The third generation Prelude also came with a new electric power steering system and a two liter four cylinder engine with 140 horsepower and 129 foot pounds of torque. This baby was a technological powerhouse, and it's no surprise that it was a tremendous success. But let's talk about my favorite generation of the Prelude, the fourth generation. This car had it all a powerful engine, a stylish design, and handling that was nothing short of a dream. And with optional rear wheel steering and a new formidable VTEC engine option, it was the most technologically sophisticated, well equipped, and depending on how you configured it, the most powerful Honda available at the time, except for the Acura NSX. Even without VTEC, the Prelude was considerably more potent over the whole RPM range. With its sleek design that combined straight edge angles and softer corners, the fifth generation Prelude was a head turner. And under the hood, it packed a punch with a 2.2 liter H22 A4 four cylinder engine that produced 195 horsepower and 156 foot pounds of torque. Plus, you could choose between a four speed automatic or five speed manual transmission. But the real magic happened when you opted for the Type SH package. This bad boy came with Honda's Active Torque Transfer System, or ATTS for short. Basically, it was an early form of active torque vectoring, and let me tell you, it was a blast to drive. It was like a technical kick in the pants. Unfortunately, the ATTS technology was heavy, expensive, and sometimes unreliable, which is why it wasn't popular. But for those who did get their hands on a Type SH, it was a truly special car. Unfortunately, by 2001, Honda had discontinued the Prelude and the Type SH, leaving it a forgotten gem in the automotive world. Or at least that's what we thought. The Japanese car maker has set their sights on net carbon neutrality by 2050, but they're not just jumping headfirst into electrification. They know it's not as simple as just swapping out engines for batteries, and they're taking a more thoughtful approach to the transition. They're constantly pushing the boundaries and finding new ways to make their vehicles even more efficient and sustainable. One example of this is their recent investment in hydrogen fuel cell technology. Honda believes that this is the key to achieving true zero emission vehicles, and they're working hard to make it a reality. But here's the real tea. There's been some rumors floating around about the return of a certain sporty little number, the Prelude. And guess what? It's not just a rumor. Honda's EV roadmap, which was released last year, actually teased the Prelude's replacement. And it's supposed to be an EV and will be delivered in 2028. Can you even imagine a fully electric Prelude? It's like a dream come true. And that's not all. There's also talk about the return of an all-electric NSX. Acura Vice President and Brand Officer John Ikeda has even dropped some hints about it, so we might be seeing some serious electric sports cars from Honda in the near future. And the best part, Honda's collaboration with GM means that their EVs will be more affordable in the latter half of the 2020s, and they plan to release 30 EV vehicles globally by 2030, with an annual output of over 2 million units. So get ready, the future is looking electric, and it's looking Honda.